My name is Dr. Jerry Harris, and I'm the director of paleontology at Dixie State College. Right now, I'm folding an origami triceratops. Origami is the art of folding paper into small objects or animals, which most people consider a Japanese art, but it actually probably originated in China uh, when they invented paper. But Japanese people are the ones who have developed it the most. I got interested in origami mostly back in high school. Uh, My father had done it when I was a child, and I used to pull books of uh, instructions out and point at things and say, hey, Dad, make this for me, make this for me. So I got interested in it that way. But in high school, I needed a hobby, so I pulled the books out and taught myself how to do it, and I've been doing it ever since. And that was So that's been about 25 years now I've been doing it. It's a really fun art. It's a really unusual art. It's one that's very underappreciated and very poorly known, which is why we're setting up this exhibit here at the St. George Dinosaur Discovery Site at Johnson Farm that we're calling Prehistorigami, Ancient Animals in Folded Paper, which is an interesting mesh between the theme of what we have here at the Natural History Museum and origami. So it's origami folded paper models specifically of prehistoric animals. So we have dinosaurs, we have a woolly mammoth, saber-toothed cats, those kinds of things. So it's a good interesting juxtaposition, a good way of introducing origami to the people of southwestern Utah in the St. George area to this ancient art form while giving them some additional information on prehistoric animals. So it's both a learning opportunity about the art and about the prehistoric animals themselves. Origami is half art and half science in a lot of ways much more so than most other art forms are because there is a lot of geometry that underlies the folding process of creating these things and a lot of the people who are the best uh, origami folders today are physicists or mathematicians in in the US in in England in Japan and they have invented and discovered some very very complicated folding techniques that produce an amazing amount of detail detail you'd never think you could get out of a single piece of paper without cutting it you can make stripes on animals and spots on insects you can make feathers on the wings of birds. You can do some amazing things with these, these really advanced folding techniques that have been discovered mathematically and used mathematically. And they've been used even outside of uh, origami itself. Principles discovered from folding things in origami have actually been used to solve mathematical problems that hadn't been solvable before. And they have been used in engineering. They've been used to, for example, find ways to fold up really big solar panel wings in little itty bitty tiny satellites so that the satellites can get launched in very small space vehicles but have the wings unfold when they're in space in order to power the satellite. So it's a, it's a very interesting combination of art and science. To learn origami, there aren't any organizations locally to do this kind of thing, although I would certainly love to start one if we had enough people that got interested enough in this art. But the, probably the primary place is to go to books. The libraries around here I know have a few books. The bookstores have several. Uh, we'll have some here at the uh, museum as well during the course of the exhibit. The Internet, yes, there are several good places on the Internet to go. I'd say just do a Google search or uh, you know, whatever search engine you like for origami, and you'll certainly find uh, lots of very simple instructions for very simple models, the types of things you'd want to do as a beginner. But you would also find instructions for much more advanced models, so as you got further and further along and progressing in, in the ability to fold things, you could start and folding some of the sorts of things that you'll be seeing in the course of this exhibit as well. And all you need is paper, fingers, good fingernails will help, and get a bone folding tool that they use for card making and scrapbooking will also substitute for if you don't have fingernails, and a little bit of patience. <laughs>